know if you can see this, but I woke up to a pretty sight this morning. You see the steam coming off that pile? That's my wood chip pile. I turned it a little bit yesterday. And it has steam this morning. That's a good thing. And this is all I'm doing to compost my chicken waste from the coop. I just get it all in a wheelbarrow and dump it out here. And all my kitchen scraps that the chickens can't eat go in this pile as well and then it gets covered. I need to cover that a little better. And when I dig down, the soil is black underneath. And I've been adding that to my garden. That was from last year, kind of. So, yeah. This is the last of my spring garden. The green onions are going to stay. I'm going to collect the basil seeds and the sage when it's ready. I still have my, I pulled my cucumbers down. They were covering that trellis that I made. Um, I still have kale, tomatoes. They'll probably be going soon once the last of the tomatoes hopefully ripen. It's still getting into the 70s during the day, so. And I have kale left. And I'm going to do an experiment with this green bean and the green bean up there. I'm going to put them in pots and put them in a sunny window and see what happens because they're still producing, so why not? You can see I still have some tomatoes left. And all this bare spot is going to be replanted with kale and possibly spinach. And then covered in plastic like my other garden that I'll show you. So classy, right? Let me show you what I got going on in here. I did this because of these plants right over here in the corner. Let me give you a better view. See that? Those are Korean cucumbers. So, and they're still alive. It's been getting down into the 30s. And I created a little microclimate here so the wind doesn't get to them and it stays above freezing at night. And they're still hanging in there. They're looking pretty good. They even have more flowers. So that's kind of cool. And over here we have comfrey, um, butter crunch lettuce, I believe. And this row over here kind of hidden is radishes. That's probably making you dizzy. I'll stop doing that. It's like that. And this is attached actually to the chicken run because it was easy to do. The cardboard is so the staples could attach to the wood, which I tied to the chicken run. And there's Brutus. So that's what I plan to do to my kitchen garden as well. And we'll see what happens. Hi, Laverne. She's my girl. She comes running when there's food. She puts her head down and books it. And there's Chu getting her close up. Hi, Choo Choo. <laughs> they got the last of the squash this morning. And the lettuce and a few dead romaine or dying romaine. And I still have some sunflowers, volunteer sunflowers that the bees really love. And these are just from the sunflower seed I feed the chickens. What's funny, this one has 10 heads on it. I don't know what they're going to do. We'll see. It's kind of interesting. While I'm out here, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. I picked these up online at a tack store. I don't remember which one. I'm going to have to find it because I want more. Um, this is a step-in or a stirrup post. There's a metal rod down at the bottom. You put your foot in there and you step into it to put it in the ground. This is this one is 60 inches and it's perfect, the perfect height. And what I did, don't mind the string. The string is to tie it to a tree so it stays upright higher than the post. Um, this is to attach this deer fencing. And that's what most of my run is besides some T-posts. And there's Brutus once again. 
So that's what I'm doing, and I'm going to be getting more of these. I don't, my run is mostly to keep chickens in, not predators out, because our only predators are dogs, and we do have coyotes in this area, but I've never seen one, and they don't usually come onto my property, as far as I know, and the chickens are in at night, and they're nocturnal, so... Um, I did have one 75-pound pit bull try to get into the run. Actually made a running dash and got tangled up in the fencing and never made it in. So I'm sticking with this kind of run. This deer fencing is about $65 for 10 feet by 150 feet, which is a heck of a deal for fencing. And I have maybe, oh gosh six or seven of them their run goes all the way around there down here all the way around those shrubs and the autumn olive and then back into the run back into the coop and they seem happy with it and wherever i put two of the fences together i just close the gaps with clothespins and on the bottom Hello, how are you? And on the bottom, I put wood or anything heavy that'll hold the bottom down. And eventually, I'll be putting wood chips on top of that. Because if you have chickens, you know they love trying to get through gaps. What do you think, guys? Aren't this one's eyes weird? I don't know why they freak me out a little bit. You're just a little, you're just bug-eyed. Just a little bit. <sighs> but this is one of these are the two black orpingtons I got this year black orping black lavender splits there's another one and that's one of the lavender orpingtons I got so they are full size I think I actually got an egg from one of them because it was darker than the other eggs it was still hey it was still pink, but it was a darker pink. So I have a feeling. And while I'm here, I don't know if you can see, that's Chicken Town. I let them in here while it was still overgrown, like that area over there. And this is what they've done. There are little roads and little pathways and under that autumn olive bush, they have a little <laughs> cleared out area where they hang and when it's hot out. Can you do that one more time? Huh? Can you do that one more time? No. That's Brutus. He's a big boy and he's really strong. I can't catch him. But I have a funny story about that. They were finding a way to escape Brutus and two of the older hens. And I didn't know what I was going to do to get him back in, so I went in the house. I've got a package of grapes. And that's what he thinks. And I opened one of the gaps in the gate. I threw a grape in and he went in. I did that like four or five times until I fixed the hole in the fence, found it and fixed it. So now, anytime he gets out, all I have to <laughs> He agrees. Now, whenever he gets out, all I have to do is open, the, open a gap in the fence, and he just walks right in because he thinks he's going to get a grape. So, yeah, you can train chickens. Okay, that's enough this morning. I'm going to go get a coffee. Have a good day. Excuse the mess. This is my growing table. But I wanted to show you the baby spider plant. I got this off the mama, was it last winter? And this, probably can't see it well because the sun's behind her. This is mama and she has a few more babies. So that's exciting. This is the only plant, the only kind of non-useful plant I grow. She's looking a little rough. I let her get dried out, but she's back. And her baby looks awesome. So this was one of my projects this morning. <clears throat> I sprayed all these plant pots down with a bleach and water solution. 
and now I'm waiting for them to dry and off gas. <clears throat> this box of potting soil is potting soil that I got for five dollars a bag, organic. Um, I bought it and was really happy about it. Came home and read the reviews and a lot of people were getting aphids. So that's why it's in a box in the sun to dry out completely. I'll probably leave it here for a few days because we're not expected to get any rain. Um, and then I'll use it. So kind of unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. And as for these, the flats are going to be used for microgreens. I have a bay window in my living room, so that's where they'll be living. Uh, this orange planter is for sorrel. I don't have any growing on my property, believe it or not. I'm in Maine, so I had to buy seeds. And since it's late in the season now, I'll be putting them inside. Uh, the round pots are for my green beans I'll be bringing in as an experiment. And then I have a couple other random pots I'll just be trying other things in. So, yeah.